This is Sylph Radio, a Pokemon-centered podcast. I'm your host, Nathan K. Every week, I have a different co-host sitting here with me, and we talk about a different aspect of the Pokemon universe. Uh, friendly reminder, this is not a podcast for children. Pokemon is not just for children. Just because something is not inappropriate for children does not make it only for children. Uh, this is a adult podcast. This podcast is inappropriate for children. So um, get your parents' permission or fuck, I don't care. I'm not your fucking parents. Also, Nintendo, Game Freak, all them motherfuckers own the rights to this shit. I own nothing. I'm just a fan and giving you guys some free promotion. So don't sue me. Uh, today, we're doing something a little different. Rather than focusing on a specific aspect of the universe, we're going to have a little bit more of a general Pokemon conversation. For the first time in a while, I have a new co-host here who hopefully will be returning in the future. Uh, he is an indie game developer and a fellow Pokemon enthusiast and video game enthusiast in general. And I apologize for the noise in the background. It's really fucking nice outside. My street sucks and I refuse to close the windows. I'm stubborn. I could have paused and waited, but I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not going to make you sit across there silent any longer. Antoine Baker, welcome to The Secret Room. Welcome to Sylph Radio. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everybody to Sylph Radio. I am glad to actually be here. I'm hyped. Super I'm hyped. Glad to have you here. It's been a long time. We've been talking about doing a podcast together for a long time, and it's finally yeah. happened. And it's finally happened. Uh, with all me being busy and you being busy and working, it, it's finally come together. With those things. With in those fact. things, in <laughs> fact. Uh, keep listening, too. Hopefully, you'll hear him on some Fair Enough episodes coming soon as well. Uh, so, yeah, before we jump into the Pokemon talk, though, indie game developer, I want to know, uh, tell, tell me a little bit about this. So, what is. What does that mean? What do you do? Well, I am, as the title says, I'm an independent game developer. um, I'm actually developing my first video game that I'm going to launch on Steam for PC, Mac, and Linux um, after the summer called Pretty Kitty Fuzzy. It's a 2D side-scrolling shooter. Basically, you're a house cat named Fuzzy who stumbles upon magical powers, and she goes out and saves the universe with the power of love and positivity. So, Which is fucking awesome yeah i've seen we we watched a little bit of gameplay before we started and you've shown me the the illustrations before the Mm -hmm. art the promo art and stuff Mm -hmm. awesome very kind of japanese vibe if you can't tell from the title yeah and i love that because i'm a big proponent i want to see more superhero movies and comics and games and stuff where the heroes are doing more than just fighting where they're saving people by doing things other than fighting, whether it's rescuing people or whether it's feeding the homeless or using the power of positivity. Granted, in the game, she's shooting the power of positivity. <laughs> she's at shooting her the power of positivity at everyone. But I mean, it's a uh, still though it has it, that it's still message. it still has the message of it that you know F- Fuzzy would rather be positive and like she has all these powers that she can change the world though. And um, how I wanted to make it more impactful that I wanted it to be an animal. Be, the, who ends up getting these powers because i mean you know people like i want to show the message that anyone whether you give them the power if they're good they're going to do good things in the world or probably the in fuzzy's case the universe she's so that's pretty much um how i um designed it and i'm a big sailor moon fan too so yes that, i didn't want to just come out and say that but it has a sailor moon vibe to it right and that and that's what that was the point that's why i wanted to get everybody's attention so like when people have seen it they go oh my god that reminds me of sailor moon and then they think about 80 other animes that like have magical like girls or like magic people fighting evil right. everywhere and so it, you know in that aspect i've done a really good job and um like at first the first game i wanted to do was a fighting game but over time i realized like that's what uh i did everything wrong that i could possibly do and then the the title ended up becoming way too ambitious um, the second game I tried to do was um, so you well you actually were working on it yeah and, I was actually okay. working on it like um I've this would be my third game but it'd be the one that's closer to being released than the other two that I created okay um, the second game um which was called Super Sentai Kitty we created a tech demo but I ended up getting a cease and desist order because Super Sentai is trademarked and I didn't know Super Sentai was trademarked and I didn't know that was like not only was it trademarked it was a brand yeah so, I, I kind of thought it was just a general um, genre in Japan as well but no yeah, that's a that's specific what, yeah, studio yeah I thought it was it was a specific and it, it crushed me and I was just like they were like yeah you can't do that and I was just like <laughs> and then I ended up getting another cease and desist order where they're like you're a cat your cat character is just like ours so I looked up the I, I forgot what 
what company it was, but I looked them up and their cat, like our two characters, were nowhere similar. Yeah, that's specious, but just because it's a cat, yeah, because yeah. it has that standoff I attitude. And- yeah. So like I was like, you know what, whatever. So like after after I got the cease and desist orders, like at that point I came to a crossroads where I wanted to quit indie development. Just kind of discouraging. Yeah, it was. I was like, you know, I wanted to. I wanted to really quit, and I just sat down, and I. I was just like, you know, whatever. I. I don't even want to do this anymore. And wh- how I got the inspiration was, um, I was telling my, I was, to, you know, mu- yeah. a mutual friend. We ended up talking. And I was really considering quitting, and then uh, I was really down about it. And then my actual cat, Fuzzy, actually came up, and then she's all meowing and everything. And she, when she knows I'm upset, she does this whole like she meows. And then she picks at my legs for me to pick her up. Oh. So I picked her up, and then, like, I sat down, and I was petting her, and then, like, she fell asleep. And I was just like, aw. I was like, she, she actually cares. My and, cat, my, I don't, she died years, years ago, but aw. my cat hated, it's, it's, it was a long time ago. I don't want to say it's okay, but, you know, it's, yeah. the wound is healed. But thank you. <laughs> she wanted nothing to do with me when I was upset. <laughs> I'm like, come here, I need a friend. And she's like, fuck you. Yeah, like, Get the girl a pair of balls. And she, I'm like, oh, I hate you. Oh, man. I hate you. <laughs> Slam the door on her. Um, <laughs> like, you don't know what it's like. <laughs> no, but um, so then um, I was I ended up playing Dead Ri- I was playing Dead Rising three after that. I went home. I was like super upset. I played Dead Rising three, and then there was this. One song. Um, it's a. Uh, it's a. Um, well, I forgot. I forgot. Well, well, it was. It was called Slappy's. Um, it was Slappy's Ultimate Playhouse, and it was this. Is this an to- ICP song? No, 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 no. It was. It was from Dead. Ri- it was from Dead Rising Three, and it's okay. this amazing chip tune song. The way it opens up, it was so and like it was so angelic and everything, and it, uh, it was. I was just and. I don't know. I was just like, oh, wow, this song is actually pretty cool. So I ended up downloading it from YouTube, and then uh, I, I was actually listening to it. And then I started watching. Like, after I played some Dead Rising, I started you know, watching Sailor Moon, and then I ended up falling asleep. And then I had this weird dream about Fuzzy just going around saving the universe. This is your real cat, Fuzzy. Yeah, this is, yeah my okay. real cat, Fuzzy. And I ended up having this really weird dream. And I think I was sleep deprived, too, because I was just like <laughs> powerhousing, like dead rising. Then I was sitting down um, just watching Sailor Moon. Then I fell asleep. It was around like 10 a.m. And then like I just had this weird dream. And then I was like, when I woke up, I was like, you know, that, was, that sounds like a pretty good idea for a game. So I just started <laughs> drawing characters... And using the song and everything that happened, being sleep deprived as inspiration, and then like I like um I was like, who can I get as a chip tune artist? So I I googled like chip tune artists, and then I was listening to some of their samples, and I came around one um one artist named J K L O L or Jack Mouse, as he's also known as. Okay. And um and he's been he's been really great. Like he's he's made the music, and everybody loves the music for it. Oh, the music's the, great. Yeah. yeah. So um like. It just went from there. Like I found him, then I found a. Um, I I could program, but I I'm not really confident in my abilities. So I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna just write the story, write the direction, and draw characters and draw everything, draw the universe out. Now, how much are you comfortable telling us about the story in the universe? Because I'm curious. I want to know more. But uh, yeah, I, I can I can I can I can divulge some stuff. Pretty much. Um, I I I I think I put way too much thought into it when I first created this. That's awesome. Because because I I I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be marketable. So like when I was like you know I wanted to lead into like toys and like little cartoons and books and so i had designed fuzzy with that in mind and then i I created a villain and then what i saw i was like you know queen barrel was a good villain so i used some elements from queen barrel but i used the greek myth of medusa as a base for the character because when she when she like um how we are gonna um have her set up and the villain's name is anguis by the way um, her hair actually shifts and moves like like coil of snakes. Okay. So um, I ended up giving her a backstory, which I ended up um, writing out, proofreading, and then I had somebody just write everything so it could be more coherent than because sometimes when I write things it's, <laughs> it's just like I'm like hey look this is my idea if you can make it make
make sense. A little more like concise, <laughs> tighten yeah. it up a little bit. Yeah, I was like, just go nuts. And then we created this really cool backstory for the um, the villain where she was at one point a magical girl who went around saving the universe. And they ended up fighting this one evil villain and they ended up defeating him. But he ended up pouring all of his dark power into her because she, you know, like when they were trying to get rid of him, the the evil um, absolute bad guy, he basically saw that she was like, you know, he she wanted to destroy me. They want to steal me away, but she wanted to destroy me. So I'm going to give her all of my power. So in in my death, I'll still win because she's going to carry on what I do. And that's where a fuzzy story picks up. Because Fuzzy is just a normal house cat in the beginning of the story. So I was going to ask, so is it just normal human world? Like, yeah, it, animals aren't normally walking around no, talking? No, animals aren't normally walking around talking. It's a normal human world, but um, Fuzzy just sits down on her favorite side of the couch, and then she's hit with a beam. She's just hit with this magical beam, and then all of a sudden she becomes this sentient magical okay. cat girl. <laughs> and how we did so we could push the real push the cute angle a bit her first act as a sentient being was she ate all the snacks and desserts in the pantry because <laughs> she only eats cat food and because she's a cat yeah so now that she can taste other things and everything so she goes out and she she loves it but then she goes outside and she sees that there's like evil like demons and cr- like giant crow monsters and everything rampaging through the city so she basically, she, as, because she's only lived in her boxed in little world where, as her owners, she's been taken care of and they love her, she goes, well, I'm going to repay the favor. I don't want these people coming in and just destroying everything. Maybe if I reason with them or hug them or something, maybe the world will be, or universe will be a better place. So she goes out and tries to save the universe from that. Okay. So it starts in our world and then she ends up going into a magical world and then she's like, oh, well, this place is in trouble too. So... We need. I need to save this place. This looks amazing, and we we need we need to save this. I need to bring the power of love and positivity to this magical realm. That's so. awesome. I love it. I'm and I I've actually expressed before. I think it was in the Goosebumps episode of Fairpoint uh, that I'm a fan of things that are designed to be marketable when done successfully by actually creative people. That that can be pretty cool. Like Pokemon, for example. Yeah. Like you know. Uh, so I, I like that aspect of it. That's really cool. And I, I hope to see it definitely succeed, um, and become as marketable. Like I want to see, I want to buy a fucking vinyl figure of those characters. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, I've, I've talked to a bunch of people and I've, uh, and I've tried setting up a bunch of, uh, partnerships. So when I, when I finish the game and I can just like, you know, go to people and be like, Hey, look, I created this game. It's a fun, cute character. I'm sure we can work together. And who wouldn't want to buy like a pop, you know, a pop vinyl of fuzzy or something, you right. know, no, who, who, you know, it's a magical, like, like anime cat no somebody somebody would love that somewhere so where can people find it should they just google pretty fuzzy kitty i'm sorry oh, pretty kitty fuzzy um, or you can um you can actually visit us on facebook um facebook.com slash pretty kitty fuzzy you can also go to our website um i, I have to update it because i'm going to upload uh, the demo that i gave you is the demo that i'm actually going to um end up uploading okay anyways on our website which is a pretty kitty fuzzy dot weebly dot com where we're trying to i'm trying to figure out somebody because i already have a domain name for um my my actual company ninja gate studios and i wanted to get that website fully done so then i could just be like hey pretty kitty fuzzy's on there so. so you said you're developing it for steam right right is steam just pc um it's pc mac and linux Okay, so, okay, but not yeah, console at but all. But no, not not console. Not unless tablets you, or smartphones. Yeah, yeah, unless you count the Steam box. Um, okay. I do plan on um, doing mobile down the line because that's that's something that everybody would want to sit down and play. Right. It's just for mobile though. You have to. There's. We would have to significantly change some of the things of how the game would actually work. So yeah, we would we would definitely we would definitely have to end up a. Uh, changing we would have to change yeah. the way the game actually functions and everything so right now we're just concentrating on the pc finishing release that version, finishing yeah. that version and then once that's done then we can easily like go okay we can shrink the resolution down for tablets or smartphones or whatever and then we could put in touch features and nice. all that other stuff so yeah with with, with all of that uh, it it actually um we would have to do some more significant work on it 
And then on top of that, um, the reason why I feel that we can do PC because we want to get that fan base to talk to people. And then so when we do release it on phones and tablets and everybody, be like, oh, my God, I played it on Steam and it was amazing. So I can't believe they made a smartphone version or a tablet version of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So and um, is is there a, a Patreon or anything like that if people want to support this, if they check um, it out? No, I tried a Kickstarter um, in February and uh, it didn't go well. It didn't go well at all. Okay. So and, are, are we going to see this story in the game? Is there going to be like yes, a little cinematic? Um, yeah, or? They'll, be, they'll be a little pixelated because the, um, the way the game looks, it's supposed to look like an old school retro Super Nintendo yeah, game. Yeah, which I love. Yeah, so it'll just be like a stilled pixel image. It'll pick up where Anguish has finally defeated the last of all the um, magical girls in the universe. And she harnesses every one of their energy into a crystal. And then she tries to take all that power for the se- herself. However, the crystal overloads and it cracks. And then the energy is just spurred off somewhere. And that's from Anguis's point of okay. view. From Fuzzy's point of view, she's just sitting on a warm part of a couch. And then she's hit with all this magical energy. And, and then the game picks up. And the game picks up from nice. there. I like it. So you see, you basically see what's going on in two people's point of views. You should do a little uh, comic or something to fully like do a little yeah, more fleshed we, out. We, yeah, we we actually did. Um, um, when the game releases, we're going to actually launch the origin story for Anguis, and it's going to be a twenty-page comic called "Pretty Kitty Fuzzy: Origins of a Serpent." And you see, cool. you see everything from the bad guy's point of view what what happened to her but like you know before she was all evil and tried to take over the universe and everything so that's awesome i'm into it i'm definitely into it yeah <laughs> uh if you're ever if you ever want to make a uh, monster battling pokemon ripoff game uh i i'm open as a creative consultant I tried, I tried, <laughs> I, you know what that was to be honest, that's one of the games I've actually tr- written down to do, but I thought of it being more post-apocalyptic. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it was a game that I did called End of Days. It's you're in a post-apocalyptic universe and there's different there's like there's angels, there's demons, there's uh, mutants and there's zombies and there's different types of those like Pokémon and you okay. can actually get them and they're diff- like you can get them and they're different monsters and then you can merge them to make like a new monster. Oh cool. So like if um so rather rather of it being it's kind of like Pokémon but it revolves around types and then if you merge those two types together you get like their ev- quote unquote evolved form of whatever yeah, the monster I like it that is. A lot. So um, it was it was something I did, but I didn't think it would be successful enough, or I didn't think people would be on board without it being yeah. It's like Pokemon, and it's not gonna be like Pokemon. And I think Pokemon ripoff should be a genre itself. Like we had a few back in the day. I I, I want to say Digimon, but technically Digimon predates Pokemon, so I can't yeah. say that. Well, but- um, have you ever played um? There was another game that was kind Monster of... Monster Rancher? Yes, but there was another one that was made for the um, Game Boy Advance. It's called... Have you ever played uh, Demi Kids? No. Okay, so um, that's kind of where my idea a little bit stemmed from. Um, it's pretty much like Pokemon, but with angels and demons. Okay. And it's part of... Um, if you ever heard of uh, Shin Megami Tensai? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it's part of that universe. Oh, okay. It's actually a bunch of demons and angels come to the world... And you know, um, and then you have to capture all of them because they're, it's kind of like Pokemon. Like they're in our world, they're here to stay. And instead of you know, people settle their beefs with you know, demon and angel battles. Um, it's um, also kind of like um, Digital Devil Saga, where it's like gang warfare but with demons. Okay, <laughs> and I've always liked stuff like that too. Like yeah. I've had a penchant for Neil Gaiman and and all that sort of like mythological fiction and stuff. Yeah, I haven't checked out Yokai Watch, but I'm curious. I've played it. When I first heard about Yokai Watch, I it was around when X and Y came out. Uh-huh. Um and it was destroying them numbers wise in Japan. And I was like Really? Yes. It was it destroyed them for three straight months for, oh, for wow. that game's release. Like X and Y did really well here, but Yokai Watch, when that dropped, no one in Japan cared about Pokemon. Well, also, X and Yokai, y. like we don't know what Yokai are here. Like Yokai yeah. are a cultural institution in Japan. Like, yeah. do you know about the whole uh, Yokai are basically like uh demons and they use most of those demons are usually they usually come through like myths Not or always uh, demons sometimes it's a bit more so nature yeah, spirits. Yeah, spirits sometimes it's like pokemon they're so yeah. varied that yeah. they're it's hard to um usually they're created out of um 
urban legends, uh-huh. and that's where they mostly get their en- there's mostly get their energies from because you're speaking about them, and the more you talk about them, the more they manifest and they become real. I know there was some other stuff about the um the, them be like mostly stemming from demons and spirits. Okay. But yeah, but the modern the modern yokai or the um the, well, from what I was told, the modern yokai are basically from like urban legends. Yeah, because there, there's thousands and thousands yeah. of Yeah. And the like... more you keep citing an urban legend, the more you might incite that yokai to exist. Sort of like a uh tulpa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and I mean also just that's how things work too. Like the more an idea is propagated, the more real an idea does become. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. I I don't know. So do you? You said you've played Yokai Watch. Yeah, I've, I've played. Do you like it? Is it? Yeah, good? it's 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 actually it's actually real good. Are the like, creatures cool? Yeah, the creatures are cool. Like I wanted to play it because I like I was so interested because I was like you know why is this game wrecking Pokemon in Japan? Like, that's kind of unheard of. Like, and they released it, like, coincide with Pokemon. It was, and I was just like, wow, like, these people have balls just going to release a game like that right? with Pokemon X and Y? And then they were like, and then I, um, there's a website that I go to called Games Industry. And they were like, yep, Yo-Kai Watch, Japan's number one for portable first month of Pokemon. And I was like, what? Wow. And then I'm like, and I was telling my friends about it. I was like, hey, have you guys heard about something called Yokai Watch? And they were like, no, what's that? I was like, I don't know, but whatever it is, it's wrecking Pokemon sales wise in Japan. And everybody was like, no, that that's only gonna last like for a week or so, and then everybody's gonna play it. Then like I go and look at the charts, and they're like, second month in a row, Yokai Watch. And what can Nintendo and the Pokemon Company can do to combat this new giant? And I was like, oh, wow, like new giant? Like I wanted to play it, and then when I when it came out, I finally got to play it, and then I was like, "Oh wow, this is really good! Like this this is a really solid game." And nice. then they and um they came out with the anime already um here in ja- uh, here in um the America. states, yeah, <laughs> in uh, Japan, uh, wishful thinking, <laughs> yeah, um like um like it's already on Netflix, and it was like it's really oh, solid. It's on Netflix, yeah, it's on oh, yeah, Yokai, check it out. Yokai Watch is actually on Netflix. The anime is actually not bad. Yeah, the anime is not bad either. And I was just like, oh okay. my god, like this is like the second coming of well, Pokemon because the Pokemon anime sucks. So yeah. if it's better than the Pokemon anime, it doesn't mean that the franchise is yeah, better. Yeah, but... no, it's um, I think it's a little played out now with the anime yeah. for Pokemon. It, like, oh yeah, because it's practically the same thing that happens to Ash. He's like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, me and Pikachu, we're best, we're best friends yeah. again, and we're gonna, we're gonna go to all these gyms, and then they steamroll all these other gyms until they get to that one gym that poses a problem, and that's a terrible matchup for Pikachu. We've and- harped on it a lot. That actually is something though that you say. I- I don't like that, too, that the gym leaders, who I see as, like, the biggest characters in the Pokemon universe, in the anime are reduced to one-episode characters. Like, yeah. most gym leaders get as much time as the samurai in the forest or AJ with the Sandshrew, or, you know? <laughs> yeah. Duplica was in more episodes than Erica. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, it was, it was, uh, I just, I really couldn't, um... I, I I really couldn't like stand it after a while because I'm just like you know it, the gym leaders aren't as important or I think they could have done like a uh, hour mini so like a um, uh, hour mega sode of the gym leaders like every time he like I think that would be really good because then it's like oh he's trying to fight the gym leader he's been training and now him and this d- gym leader are in this episode well, for just, like an unfortunately hour. the the creators and whatever of the show just don't care enough. Because they're not trying to tell a story. They're just trying to advertise the Pokemon franchise. Yeah. That's really what it is. Because the mangas are telling a story. The gym leaders play roles in the mangas. And like characters grow and develop and evolve. And Pokemon yeah. actually evolve too. Yeah. And like... They're just, they don't care. Like, they've said in interviews, like, Ash doesn't grow because he's not, it's not, it's just supposed to be for kids. Kids are just supposed to watch it and see a kid and want to get Pokemon and I buy mean, our fucking toys. Yeah, I, uh, I think... I paraphrase. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... I really think that um, I really do think that they they should just do like a new generation of trainers. Like Ash should just like be the be all end all guy for I his time, and then he do, just let him go off and do his own thing. Let him do whatever like, they want maybe, with that. Show. Maybe marry Gary's sister or something. <laughs> you know, stick it to the guy. Does like, Gary even have a sister in the show? Um, n- I don't think no, so. I, no, I don't. I don't think he does. In the game, he does. And in, in the, the game, he one does. of the mangas. He yeah, does. in in the in the mangas and in the games. He does have a sister, and Ash does That's like I her. I say fuck that show and just come up with a new series. Like the way that you – have you seen Pokemon Origins? Yeah. Pokemon oh, Master I, the I've Origin? I've seen that one. That was, Amazing. that was pulled from the game 
Like, and they were like, you know what? We're going to take your 100 and something hours of gameplay and condense it into this mini series. And it was amazing. Series. Now, imagine if that was 100 episodes and, like, Erica was in, like, four of those. Like, they had build-ups for each gym leader and stuff, you know? And, like, that would be amazing. Yeah. And roles for the character to play in an actual storyline. Like, uh. Yeah. Like, it, it, it would have it been, re- been really good to see. But... What about, uh, on the, in the vein of Pokemon ripoffs, uh, Nino Kuni? Wrath of the White Witch, I think um, it's called the. I think it had Studio Ghibli. Yeah, I think it was rather a better story than a Pokemon ripoff. I didn't like the monsters, and it seemed weird. They would change into completely different creatures, and I'd be like, "What the fuck?" I mean, I think there was a Pokemon inspiration to it, but I don't think they were trying to go full blown Pokemon ripoff. Right. I think they wanted you to be like, you know, this is Studio Ghibli, and you love our stories, so you're not gonna really play this game for the monsters and the pokemon ish aspect you're just going to play it because you love studio ghibli stories and i i after playing the game i kind of agree with that i kind of i kind of agree with it because it was really story heavy and they were trying to capture that studio ghibli magic which they did it was a phenomenal game and if you haven't played it you should it's 20 bucks now Oh, nice. And so it, it was It was a really good enchanting story. It's something that you would expect Studio Ghibli to make if they were to make video games from there on out. Nice. So, yeah. Well, hopefully they'll make another one. Yeah, ho- hopefully they will. Speaking of Pokemon-ish ripoffs, anything that involves a figure, I kind of would put that there. What um, do you mean? Like, a, uh, like, like uh, an Amiibo like model Amiibo, or Skylanders? Skylanders. Infinity figures, well, and Disney doesn't do uh, video game publishing. They actually pulled out. So they canceled, they canceled um, Infinity 4.0. They took down Disney Interactive. And I think they're about to lay off Avalanche Studios, who makes the uh, Infinity figures. Okay, yeah, I know that Disney said they want to do more in-house development or yeah. something like that. Uh, no, um, no, um, it, it's, um, they they wanted to get out of video games in general. Oh, so, so they're, they're getting rid of in-house yeah, development. Yeah, they're, they're getting re- yeah, they're getting rid of in-house development, which I thought was pretty head scratching to me because they seem to want to control every other aspect of yeah, their properties. Yeah. yeah, maybe they're just putting what? more money into it than they're getting back. I don't know. Actually, no, because Infinity um. Made three times their projectly quarters. Oh wow! I don't yeah. know. I, I and that's why, like in the industry, like we were like when I was going on forums, everyone was confused because they were like it made almost as much as the Star Wars and Avengers movies. <laughs> so why would they why pull would you, out? Yeah, I would. I I don't game as much as I used to, so I haven't really played Disney Infinity. I have the Jack Sparrow figure because it's awesome. Yeah, and I'm a little disappointed too because those figures are cool. I think it's a cool idea, and that is kind of sad that it's just. Especially, why would you just stop it and not just give it to a different developer then or something? Yeah, well, what they're doing now is they're doing a um, licensing model. So anybody who wants to create anything revolving around any of the Disney licenses, you can just buy a license from Disney to make um, just to make a game. And they're not, but they're not going to publish it or like develop it. That'll be all on whoever gets the license now. Interesting. So that's why now there's a petition going around for a Marvel versus Capcom four because if Marvel, if uh, if the Marvel license is up for grabs, then Capcom can just get Holy it and shit. Then do that. Did Marvel versus Capcom three come out before Marvel was purchased by Disney? Mm-hmm. God damn, I'm feeling older by the day. Yeah. Jesus Christ! It was, it was actually when they when they developed the game. It was a couple months later. Disney bought Marvel. Okay, so it was right around that time. So yeah, so at that time, that's why it ended up getting pulled off the shelf because they couldn't pay for the licensing fees that Disney was that Disney now held because they were like, oh, we're going to raise the price of this now because whatever Marvel said, that doesn't mean anything now because Shit. we're Marvel. Ha <laughs> ha So <laughs> bad Mickey impression. But, um, <laughs> right. but um, yeah, but then um, so Capcom just took down all the DLC. They took down everything off the market because they couldn't afford it. It was a really, it was a really, really like, like huge event at that time. And now that they've gone and pulled out and was like all right well we're gonna make the licenses cheaper and we're gonna let d- other video game developers do what they want and it's just like wow you, they were so draconian in the beginning they were like they were like oh this these are our licenses now yeah this is how much we these want are for our them. public domain properties <laughs> these are our public domains and it's like oh man like disney's just and now they're just like man all right we're good <laughs> we made whatever we wanted to you guys could do whatever you want. So it, it was just almost like a reverse slap in the face. Like, 
like we like Marvel vs. Capcom three probably would have had like another balance tweak or another like sub game by now if like if they were to just kept it the way it yeah. was going. So I was just like, oh man, like all those people that like gave up their yeah, Disney DLC, licenses, more fighters and yeah, stuff, yeah, and yeah, for all those people who gave up those licenses, and now Disney's like, all right, oh, if you guys want licenses, you can d- use them to make whatever, and then everybody's just like. What the fuck, Disney? <laughs> like, I've actually thought before. I've had the thought. And if Nintendo wasn't handling the franchise so so well, I would entertain the thought more. But I wouldn't be pissed if Disney bought Pokemon. Um, except that Nintendo is doing so great with Pokemon that I don't want it to... You, you know what I mean? Wanna, you don't I don't want, want it to, to change happen. hands. But if, if Nintendo starts dropping the ball, then... Uh, but no, I love Nintendo. Yeah, I'm, I don't such, think... I think fuck, the- I wouldn't be pissed if Disney bought Nintendo. Let's just say that. I, I, well, they might save it. They might fucking save it. You know, I'm surprised I've never had that. I, I want it to happen now. I I kind of do, but at the same time, I kind of don't. Yeah. I, I, I don't really want that to happen. I think if anything were to happen in Nintendo, I think that they have the portable market on lock. And I think they should, if if this new new system doesn't do well, the NX, if it doesn't do any sort of well, I think that this would be it for Nintendo. I think they would just make portable portable systems because like the 3DS and or the, I should say the DS family of systems has outsold every Nintendo system so far. Thanks in no small part to Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> like this uh, literally outsold every Nintendo console since the GameCube. So, wow. Well, with the exception of the Wii. The Wii hands down one last console generation. It's just everybody doesn't want to give it credit because they're like, it's not an HD console. <laughs> and it's like, come on, guys. They sold more units than the Xbox 360 and PS3 combined. So they won. Whether you want to, whatever stipulation you want to give them, Nintendo won last generation. They did. Yeah. It. They're just not winning this time. <laughs> no, PlayStation. The, the PlayStation PlayStation has that on lock right but now. But I'm still, I just love Nintendo. I've always been a Nintendo fanboy. They still make the titles that I'm interested in. and yeah. Right. And, and right now, they're taking a step in the right direction. It's about time. It, like, you know, uh, like a developer, a developer or um, a publisher, like... Um, I mean, what? How do I want to say this? Before, <laughs> how do I want to say this without sounding like a complete idiot? But um, ah, the, what I wanted to say now escapes me. But um, <laughs> that's okay. Like, n- like n- Nintendo's just been messing up, man. And it's just they're going in the right direction. They're have they're they're taking the core gamers seriously. Yeah, there there we go. That's what I wanted to say. They're taking the core gamers seriously because they rely too much on families and kids, and it was either Pokemon is going to bail us out or Mario is going to bail us out. Right. And if they Zelda don't bail sometimes. us out, then they'll be like, okay, we got to whip out the Zelda game now. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then if, on the rare case that a Zelda game fails, they're like, okay, I think we need to make a Metroid game. And they really shouldn't be doing that. Like, they, they've been losing so much third-party support over the years to the point where they've just been like, you know what? We got to do, if you want things done right, you got to do it yourselves. And it's like, yeah, it's not going to work because... I mean, like, for example, like, what I thought was weird when the Wii U came out. And they were like, oh, we got Mass Effect 3. That's cool. We've already played Mass Effect 3. <laughs> and your competition yeah. has 1 and 2. <laughs> so if anybody who's trying to get into Mass Effect are playing 3 on the Wii U, they're not going to know what the hell's really going on yeah. because they're only playing Part 3. They're playing the last game in the trilogy, which... For people who are getting a PS3, because like one, uh, Mass Effect One was an Xbox exclusive for a long time, even when EA bought Bioware. Like, um, like you were, they were still playing Mass Effect One. So you play Mass Effect One, you play Mass Effect Two, then you play Mass Effect Three. The magic about those games were whatever decision you made in those respective games carried to the yeah. next game. Like. My friend wiped out a race of aliens, and they weren't even around or mentioned in the other two games. Yeah, which we did in our very early run of Fairpoint, because I had never played the Mass Effect games, but they're Craig's favorite. That's Craig's favorite game it's, franchise. I think it's the best sci-fi gaming series of all time. Yeah, he loves it, and yeah. he explained that to me, and I'm like, that's fucking phenomenal. That's like, like revolutionary that it can 
carries on from your last game. The yeah. closest thing we had to that before was sending your Pokemon up to the next yeah. generation. Yeah, and like if you've never played Mass Effect or seen anyone play it, you need to play that game because the the way the story is tailored, it's literally a case by case scenario. It's your story. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, but back- backtracking the why I said because I digressed for a little bit. But um, yeah, with Nintendo, like they they're not reaching out to the hardcore gamers. They were only trying to get, you know, the families and the kids, which is cool because they out, they outnumber hardcore gamers like 10 mm-hmm. to one, uh, contrary to popular belief. Um, cause everybody goes like, Oh, the hardcore gamers are going to buy. It. I was like, the hardcore gamers are going to buy anything anyway, because you are the hardcore gamer. <laughs> right. Whether you're bitch and complain, you're still it's going like a comic to, geek but, going to see a comic book movie, movie that looks absolutely horrible, horrible, but they're yeah. still going to buy they're the They're still going to buy the ticket and then go be like, Oh yeah, I went to go see X, X men, Ap- uh, apocalypse. And it was the worst movie ever. Oh, so you went to see it. Yeah. I just wanted to see how terrible it was. <laughs> So you spent seventeen dollars. Pirate it then. <laughs> Teach them a lesson Teach and don't them give them lesson. your money. Like I think piracy is used the wrong way. <laughs> like everybody wants to pirate everything. No, you use piracy for bad products. Not that I'm condoning <laughs> it or anything, or self radio condones it. But if you're going to use it as a valid weapon, I would use it to just get crap items. That's basically what you do. I, but, I man, we're gonna get into a million different conversations. I think. Piracy is just an inevitable herald of the new type of uh, economic format we need with regards to entertainment. Um, I think crowdsourcing and stuff like that is going to grow and develop into a new sort of you know economic model for entertainment, or it's not going to work. It has to. Like yeah. But uh, Nintendo, I'm really excited though that they're finally doing stuff with their properties, um, like in entertainment you know and like movies and animes and com- like they've announced that there's going to be like a bunch of new movies coming out but they haven't announced what titles are going to be turned into movies they ha- just did that recent star fox anime did you see that yeah i, I saw a little bit it of was it okay yeah it was, it was all right then i'm they- just happy they're I want to. I've been wanting so long to see a good Mario cartoon and some more Pokemon stuff and Metroid and Legend of Zelda. Like fuck. And well, to be honest, like yeah, it was. I mean, I'm glad Nintendo is like actually doing stuff like that. Like, um, it's a shame that they're tardy to the party because everybody's already refining all of that, and Nintendo's like, "Hey guys, we're taking all our property seriously. We're making animes," and I'm like, "Yeah, but these other companies have been doing that." And that's true, but. And you're right. I I 100% agree with you. But here's where I think Nintendo still has a little bit of an edge is like these characters are institutions on the level that no other video game company has. PlayStation and Xbox and like they don't have characters that are on that level of Mario, Link, and Pokemon. Right. I I, they really, I, I agree with that. People they, who don't know video games know those. They, they might call him Zelda. They might yeah. say Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon, and they might yeah. think Pokemon is the little yellow guy with red cheeks. But yeah, <laughs> still. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And like, his name's Pokemon. But... Pokemon. <laughs> po- Pokemon. At the least electric they got type... Mario right. Pokemon, the electric type Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemans, I choose you, <laughs> Pokey. No, but um. Yeah, like I yeah, with that thinking about it that way, yeah, I do think Nintendo has an edge, but at the same time you can really fuck that up if you're not careful though. And I think Which is why they haven't been making because after the Mario movie they were like, Fuck it, we're done. We're never letting another studio handle our properties again, like because it was so disastrous. Well, after the Mar- well, after the Mario movie, they still appealed to kids because we got the Super no, Mario. No, I know, but I mean, as far as having movies and comics and cartoons, like that, all pretty much stopped after that. It, yeah, it's it stopped for a little bit. Like uh, the like, the Mario Brothers movie came out in. No, I want to guess ninety one. I don't have my computer here to look yeah, it up. Yeah, because but... I think and I think it was a two year hiatus before Nintendo Ooh. let us get the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. With the live action segments, I think that was a little earlier than the Mario movie. Really? Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that was in the '80s. I think the Mario movie was '93 because the Raptor Yoshi was kind of a Jurassic Park ripoff. Looked like a oh, raptor. Oh yeah. So it had to be after Jurassic Park. Uh, but no, I the, forgot about that. Yeah, the Super Show, and then there was also Super Mario Brothers Three. That was the reason why that it, movie is the reason why we have Daisy now. Da- oh, because they named Daisy- no, no, no. Daisy was in the Game Boy game. 
Daisy was she was in the games before. She was in the Super Mario Land on the Game Boy. Oh, she was in Super Mario Land. Yep. I heard. Yeah, you know, I heard that she. The reason why we got Daisy was because of the. No, but they the fucked movie. it up and they called her Daisy. That probably is what propagated the idea of Daisy. And, and having ended up bringing Louis, her back. Yeah, and then Louise, Luigi in the movie was going with Daisy, and Mario already had a wife in the movie. Did he? Yeah, he had a wife. wife. I gotta say, as awful as that movie was, Bob Hoskins and um, John, John Leguizamo, Leguizamo, great casting. I think that's great casting. Yeah, that was. And you know, Dennis Hopper. I, I, don't I, know don't, about, I love Dennis I Hopper. I love but. Dennis Hopper, but I don't. I don't know as King Koopa like. I mean, That's one of the few roles I'd be okay with a professional wrestler taking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like as as, as Bowser or King King Koopa because he was king of the Koopas. But yeah, um, no, it was it was really weird because I was like uh, Dennis Hopper. I don't know, but yeah, like um, yeah, like because in that movie, yeah, Mario had a wife. Okay. Yeah, Mario had a wife in that. It was well, he Luigi. had a girlfriend when he was in in New York in Nintendo Canon. Pauline was the girl that Donkey Kong kidnapped in yeah. the Donkey Kong game. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a real big Mario kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and, and yeah, and um, yeah, he did have. He ended up having a girlfriend, but then she ended up getting pushed to the wayside yeah, for a princess. She got kidnapped Peach. by Donkey Kong. He <laughs> saved her, and then he found that Peach. <laughs> <laughs> he found Peach. Uh Man, oh man, Paul, there should be like a game just like Pauline's Revenge yes. or something. <laughs> she just kidnaps Peach, and you think it's Bowser the whole time. That would be amazing. And, and then the she's like, the no, end. Mario, it's me, Pauline. Oh, that'd be so dope. What if she had and Donkey she, Kong and, and, working for her? Oh, yeah, that would be that would be actually pretty cool. What, 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 one thing that also, like, they never put Pauline in any of, like... Never the, again. Like, with oh, the, any of the Nintendo cast. They did put her in the um, the newer... Mario versus Donkey Kong, I think, was the and it was amazing because I was like, "What? Pauline's back? I thought they disowned her. I yeah. thought she was like the launch of the <laughs> if you watch DBZ of the Nintendo universe." Yeah, like it, uh, it was pretty much. Uh, yeah, because I, 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 but I thought they would put her in more stuff though. Like I thought that she would like at least have an appearance in Smash. That's Brothers. how I feel about Kamek. The Magic Koopa? Yeah. I want Kamek, and he's one of my favorites. And also, you've played Mario RPG, right? Yeah, I played. Gen- I, yes, I'm a Geno fanboy. Everybody wants Geno back. <laughs> yeah. Now that there's, they just put Cloud in Smash Brothers, and um, there's a Geno costume for your me in Smash Brothers now. So hopefully we'll get to see Geno more. I, th- I think I heard somebody say, like, I just didn't know people liked him. I thought it was uh, because Square and Nintendo had such a rocky relationship, and they both co-owned that game. Yeah, well, they both co-developed it because it was supposed to be it was supposed to be a new partnership under Nintendo because mm-hmm. Nintendo was like trying to wean into like the new gaming market when Sony was trying to get in and then yeah. Sega was doing their thing and they were like, oh well, we well, if we have all these partnerships with these companies, like we'll stand out more and then they kind of ruined them like like yeah like if it wasn't for Sega. Oh uh, no! I'm sorry. Um, Nintendo and Sega like backstabbing Sony. We wouldn't have the PlayStation today. Right. We would. We would either have a really superior Sega system or really superior Nintendo system. I still think it's crazy that Sega died so hard. While we're still talking about Mario, though, I wanted to ask: yeah. Have you seen the first ever Mario movie? There was a theatrical release, a Mario anime in Japan. Before the like the uh, super th- show and all that, that was American made. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it was it the one where he was falling asleep in front of a TV and Peach was trying to I contact think him. So and he and gets then, sucked into the TV and then he's on this adventure like he was in the video game. Yeah, and him and Luigi. There's a part where like Luigi. I think that is unless that's just a short. But no, I'm pretty sure that's it. And then. Uh, Luigi, like, eats some bad mushrooms at one point, legitimately, and, like, trips the fuck out. He starts <laughs> crying. He has, like, an emotional breakdown. Like, it's, it's really weird. Yeah, I think, yeah I, think I've, I think I've actually seen that. It's fantastic. It's yeah. so true to the Mario spirit. Like, it looks great. It feels like Mario. And I would love to see another... I want to see an animated Mario movie like that. Like, if it's American-made or Japanese-made, I don't care. Like... They, I know that it can be done right if you put the right people. Who would on it. have the chops to do that, though? <laughs> Thank There's... you for listening to our Pokemon podcast. <laughs> so anyway, about Mario, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Mario, the Pokemon is part of the Nintendo universe, so technically, I mean, yeah, it all falls get, under. It, the it all umbrella. falls under. I mean, pretty soon we'll we're going to call s- this like Nintendo Pokemon ripoffs and indie development or something. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, who? What anime production company would have the chops to make that really happen? I don't fucking know. I don't know enough about anime production companies <laughs> to hmm, wager maybe, a maybe guess. Maybe some of your viewers will. Maybe <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody's like, "Oh my god!" Like Funimation could do something, and it's like is it a probably production IG or Studio Ghibli. Fuck it. I want Studio Ghibli to do everything. <laughs> Actually, that could probably work. Oh, it would mean, be beautiful. Actually, because it would be kind of true to the older. whimsical, and it'd yeah, be, yeah, it'd be kind of whimsical. But then it would probably be some underlying message like Mario's really this drug abusing, mushroom popping. No, you know what? My, <laughs> <laughs> to me, the underlying message of the Mario story because I'm 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 way too big a Mario fanboy. I've like overanalyzed. <laughs> I've like made way before the internet. People were like coming up with theories about the stories and coming up with a timeline. I did that shit as a kid. I was like, so this game is before this and this, and Mario clearly did this and this and this and, and like in this order. I see it as the story of Mario uniting the people of the Mushroom Kingdom because as the games progress, characters like Goombas and Koopa Troopas and stuff are more commonly seen as friendly characters um, coexisting alongside the Toads. I have this whole, it's crazy. I have this whole, like, <laughs> so lore in my head that perfectly fits with the games. It's, so that's for Super Mario, then. Because technically, Mario Brothers never got a sequel because it was a puzzle platformer. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah so yeah. Super Mario Brothers. I'm saying the whole franchise as a whole. Okay. Every game. The RPG, the, the Mario Kart, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario World, all of it together. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, because yeah, what with, with yeah with the Nintendo, I like, have a under, whole, the for Nintendo, real. Yeah, I would say Mario Super Mario Brothers two never really happened. I think that yeah was, that was a dream. Yeah, it was a dream, and I think that was the most ideal situation. But the Dreamland was there, and a lot of characters from that game, like Shy Guys and stuff, Shy now Guys exist, and Birdo. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't. I see it. So like. <laughs> I think that was him dreaming of an ideal scenario that he finally brings everything together because at the end everybody's just like like you know all the species are just standing there like cheering yeah and, and then he I think he hands back the wand or something to the the like the king or whatever I'm trying to rem- I don't remember I, I, I remember trying- him laying in bed and snoring I don't totally remember yeah. I think it really happened in a dreamland but. I, I I used to always think that that was him dreaming of the ideal scenario of uniting everybody. Okay. So that's what I... I so if you look at... Okay, the main storyline I see, we're doing this. Um, <laughs> the, so Yoshi's Island, you remember when Baby Mario and everything? Yeah. It's clearly one of the earliest ones. And you see that Bowser is a baby and um, Kamek is kind of in charge. And they're building castles on Yoshi's Island. But they keep getting torn... The Yoshis tear them down with every castle they build. The Yoshis are clearly the pinnacle of evolution. They reproduce metabolically. Um, they eat and reproduce that way rather than having to uh, – they don't reproduce sexually. Like, yeah. you know, um, they, they're fit for any environment. The way you see them, I think that's represented in the gameplay by showing them turn into helicopters, submarines. Yeah. I think that is a I think also metaphor for yeah, their adaptability. I think also – uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't the colors represent that they're, the environments that they're from? The colors represented the different foods they liked in Yoshi's story. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they make shoes. They make their own shoes so they're, they can adapt. They're, they're intelligent. They're tool using. Yeah. Like, they have these long tongues. They, can, they have, like, some type of air sac that allows them to float from it. They're, like, the pinnacle of evolution. And, and I see, like, so Kamek went to Yoshi's Island. They, first, they ruled over, like, the mainland, what we know as the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah. And they had all these castles there. Then they went to Yoshi's Island after, like, maybe Bowser's dad died or something. They had to kind of lay low. or I don't know what happened, but they wanted to – Kamek wanted to get the Yoshis, and they couldn't. It was a failed experiment. They kept tearing down the castles. They kept fucking it up. They went back to the mainland, and the Toadies had tore down most of their castles um, and started building their own civilizations. And that's why we see all these pipes coming out of nowhere because there's, there used to be plumbing and an infrastructure there that the Koopas built, but their, their society was torn down when they left and whatever. And I have this whole, like, it's crazy. And, uh... I know, but it, it's, it makes like a lot of sense though, because it's like, why would you do that? And then when you go down the pipes, you're always going to like a dank, dark place, Yeah, which you would be like, Oh, sewage is supposed to be here. <laughs> 
Yeah, like, there's I, supposed to be fecal matter coursing through this. And, and also, they're water. fungus people, so I, I feel like they hung out, hit out underground a lot. So that's why there's a lot of underground areas, too, and yeah. stuff. And, like, I have this whole... I've thought about it a lot since I was a little kid. <laughs> yeah, there's, like, whole things <laughs> mapped out. One thing I love about old games is um now i don't want it would be arguing with progress for me to say that games shouldn't have cutscenes and in-depth stories and voice acting that's stupid it's awesome that we can do that now with gaming and of course we're going to it's great it's the pinnacle of storytelling but one thing i personally loved about what to me was the golden age of gaming super nintendo era was that so many games like mario or Zelda or Metroid, whatever, like they had some type of story that you'd read in the instruction booklet. And maybe you'd read a little comic book in Nintendo Power that gave you a little more insight. Yeah. But so much was left up to your imagination. Like, what is Mario's adventure actually like? What is the drama of this story like? And as I was playing these games, Zombies Ate My Neighbors has no story. You know what I mean? But in my head, I would fill in this whole story. And I loved that to have these all these characters and bad guys and scenarios pre-made for me, for my imagination to fill in the gaps in between. Yeah, and- there's there's probably one game since that era that has done that really well. And as much as it's beating a dead horse in the head right now, I got to give it to Five Nights at Freddy's. Mm. Five Nights at Freddy's has a really, you leave everything up to your imagination to the point where people have figured out the story and patched it together using their imagination. It's, oh, really? It's minimalistic. Because I you, read about the story. I didn't realize that was all put together by the fans. Yeah, it was That's put together awesome. by the fans. It's super minimalistic because when you play the game, you're just like, okay, what am I doing? And it's a guy just saying, you're a security guard, and these animatronics are going crazy for some reason. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, you know so, what? There's clues in like, and the newspaper clues, clippings yeah, and stuff. Yeah, there's clues, and you have to use the environment and everything around you. That's I when did people, know about that, yeah. but I forgot. I've never played these games, but I am familiar with it, and I do yeah. find it fascinating. And I think it's cool. A lot of people look down on it because kids like it, and people like to look down on things that right, kids but, like. And people say, like, oh, well, you know, the story is still bad because it seems cobbled together, and Scott Cawthon doesn't know what he's doing. But it's like, no, you got to give the guy credit because he created a universe that was up to your imagination. And it's an was, iconic yeah. – it's a new iconic horror idea because – that only someone from our generation could have made who grew up g- going to Chuck E. Cheese being freaked out by them. Yeah. And there's so many horror iconic – or there's so many iconic horror ideas that have already been done that it's hard to find a new one. A killer doll, a werewolf, a vampire, a dream killer. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now this is like, oh, well, that is a new one, and that's great because it does tap into this – idea this of something that's fear in, yeah, like cause when you were a scary. kid like you go to Chuck E. Cheese's and you're cool you're like you're having a good time then the animatronics bust out and you're like oh, what the f- is going on like and it plays on ideas of like hauntings on, of demonic possession of like machines being scary and uncomfortable the yeah. uncanny valley like so much yeah I think I do respect it I don't know a whole lot about it but you I like should, it yeah you should you should actually look at it because it's the story is super minimalistic every game and you have to literally use your imagination or pick up on clues to understand what's going on in and that universe. Child-friendly horror that's actually scary? Yeah. What? Because yeah. I'm sorry. I don't care what you say. Goosebumps was not fucking scary. And, like, like I like a lot I of think, child-friendly uh, yeah. horror. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, I think Goosebumps was more of a fucked up make you think in a way. Like, wow, that kid did everything he possibly could <laughs> to get out of that situation and still lost. <laughs> Like versus if Five Nights at Freddy's, you're like, holy crap! Uh, like my like, I literally had a friend who was a security guard. He quit his job. Oh my god! <laughs> he because he was basically saying like there was parts where um he had to do he had a, he was a security guard in the warehouse and it the job didn't bother him until he played Five Nights oh at Freddy's. Oh my god! Because he now he's associating looking because at the he's like there was parts where. There's dark places, like, and the lights don't come on, so he has to use his flashlight, and that's what creeped him out the most. And he's like, there's some parts where, you know how, like, you have those, uh, those lights where the, the motion sensor lights, they're supposed to come on. Like, yeah. he's like, some of them sometimes don't come on. And he was like, he's like, after a week, after, after he played the game, he's like, he couldn't take it, and he just quit. <laughs> so... But he he was like, good thing I worked there for over a That's year insane. though. So he got workers like he's got um he got workers unemployed, cop. no workers cop, but unemployment. <laughs> but he basically I was just like, wow, like that freaked him out like that. And I was like, I was like, and this guy watches horror movies all the time. Like, like he he like for this to like put him on that level of like holy crap, like 
he like it gave him a second thought about his own job, like because he was a security guard. That's so crazy. I thought it was hilarious, and we made fun of him for like a month about it because we were like, oh, you want to play Five Nights at Freddy's too? <laughs> He's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> like he was like, you know, just in case, you know, if I want another security job down the line, I'm, gonna I'm not going to play. I'm going to stay away from the Five Nights at Freddy's games. But That's great. No, yeah, it like there's there's really a lot of games that don't have that sort of like narrative anymore where it's like you use your imagination but we have the universe set up for you i love that to put and all those pieces another together. like fighting games like street fighter mortal Kombat. like now we know this the whole story there's been so many animes and like yeah. in-depth comics and stuff but like in the early days when you'd get a fighting game mortal Kombat, primal rage clay fighter street fighter whatever yeah. it was there would be all these different colorful characters that clearly had so much personality, but you would know so little about their story that, to me at least, I would fill yeah. in the blanks and be you, like, well, you that would guy's fill, obviously you would a fill bad in the guy. Blanks and, for that. and then on top of that, because of the minimalistic storytelling that these, like the gaming had back then, you you had to really, like, it encouraged you to like, okay, what's this guy's deal? I'm going to beat the game with him. What's his guy's, what's, yes, what's his deal? I love that. So it encouraged people to sit down and like invest time into these characters. And it would really piss me off with the dawning of like the PlayStation and the GameCube and stuff, or not the GameCube, but the Dreamcast was what I was thinking of, but the GameCube too. Yeah. Um, that uh, like my brother would just like skip the cutscene. Like I'd be watching him play and he'd skip a cutscene. I'd be like, dude, He's yeah. like, oh, get to get-. well, I'm watching. Fuck you. Don't skip the cutscene. Yeah. I'm in- invested in the story. Yeah. Like and that's what happened is because you know people people started to have more um, you know a minimalistic attention span for story now Mm -hmm. though they're the same people that'll turn around and complain that there's not enough story right and it's like well how could you appreciate the story when you're like oh skip cutscene they're talking too long people want something to complain about yeah that's pretty much what (laughs) it is i mean us gamers we we don't stick to our guns for anything. And, I'm, <laughs> and as an indie game developer, I'm notorious for it too. But like, to be 100% honest, like, I think voting with your wallet is the best thing. And a lot of people get on me about that because they're like, because of the, pre- like, for example, EA used to be my favorite company in the whole wide world. Like, I loved EA to death. Then around the 360 era, like last gen, they started doing all that DLC online passes so on like cutting out local multiplayer and racing games like how can you like i bought like the last good need for speed is carbon in yeah. my opinion That's because you could play ago. yeah you could play like up to four people split screen at once now you you, you have to play by yourself uh, yeah i god and, that drives me crazy yeah. the fact that like alien versus predator didn't have a versus mode motherfucker a game with the word versus in the title <laughs> is not allowed to not have a, a versus, versus mode. mode and you know, like, because they want you, like, they figure if you go out and buy it and eight of your friends come over and play it, then, then, they're, not your, buy it. then well, they're not gonna buy it. So if they got fap, the single fap, player, fap, get over it. You're gonna make your money. If it's a good game, they're gonna buy it. Like, yeah, gaming, like, and, you know, sometimes the gamers, like, buy into some of these, like, false back, beliefs. Back that, to piracy. It, it, it roots back to what we were talking about with piracy. Yeah. Like, it, people, it's, it's a witch hunt. People were pissed about. Fucking eight track recorders. People were pissed about the VCR, and it did not destroy the infrastructure of the entertainment industry. Like people are still gonna buy video games and movies and music. You'll make your money if you got to try a little harder. So fucking be it. Like yeah, a lot of a lot of companies. It's easier. It's easier to trick people into giving you your quarterly profit rather than building a game and having it be this blockbuster well, idea on its own merit. Now, it's, it's easier to trick us to do something now because, like, for instance, what drew the line for me, Madden 2010, the pre-order bonus was the NFC, AFC, Pro Bowl, All-Star teams. The two fucking teams that we got for 20 years for free. <laughs> and they were pre-order bonuses. And if you it's, didn't pre-order Madden 2010... You had to That's pay for the is, All-Star team. I worked at GameStop for a long time. I'm very yeah. disillusioned with yeah. the gaming industry. Yeah. I don't even barely game anymore. It's so fucked. Yeah. And not just game companies, but I'm pretty sure companies in general are like legally like obligated to maximize their profits to their share excuse me, to their shareholders because of the, like they owe that like legal responsibility to their shareholders to maximize profits and they're judged 
on like, I don't know, quarterly or like yearly, like they're judged on such a small amount of time that there are things that companies could be doing that would yield greater profits in the long run. Like, like, a, you, like what, what gaming used to be. And that's and, what made gaming so good because when you saw Final Fantasy, like I pull up Final Fantasy 7, everyone's favorite RPG, even though I think it's been beat over the head to death because, you know, I think they've explained everything and now they're just over explaining things in that universe. But the point is, Final Fantasy 7 came out you didn't really see another Final Fantasy game for a while because you were buying Final Fantasy VII and everybody was getting around to enjoy the story. Mm-hmm. The version that we ended up getting was the international version, which basically, if you actually play the original Final Fantasy VII in uh, Japan, there is no emerald or ruby weapon, and you don't get to play as Yuffie and Vincent. Like, you don't get those extra what? characters. Wow. So, you don't, you, there's a whole piece of the game, like, there's a whole extra piece of the game that we got that Japan didn't get. Oh, my God. They got all of that. When we got all of that. I love Yuffie. That would suck. Yeah. So, when we got all of that, we were technically got the international version of Final Fantasy VII. That's Seven. cool, though. Yeah. So, which is, which is cool. But, like, they put all that time and effort, like, into make, crafting a really good game nowadays, like I tell people, like when everybody was out and we can patch it. Yeah, like the technology of patching is phenomenal. I'm so glad that you can do that because it could fix so many problems with other older games. You can't do anything about it if there's a broken part of it. Yeah, now you can, but they use it as an excuse to. And this is a conversation that's been. We're not saying anything our listeners haven't heard. I'm yeah, sure, pretty but, much. Yeah, <laughs> like. It is a that is a fucking problem. Like, give me a finished product. I agree. Like, I don't want to buy. Like, when you're announcing uh, DLC before the game's even out, that should be part of the game. DLC right. is when you want to revisit the game and make a little bit more money. Milk, sure, milk, milk it. I'm, I'm going to allow you as a corporate entity to milk me, milk me out of, yeah, milk that game and, you know, get more of my money. But not... Like you got, you yeah. still have to make a full game and yeah. then milk me for extra maps. Like, and like shit. when they, like when they sat up there and they were talking about like, um, like when some games are like, oh yeah, we have this DLC that's coming out that's about this with this like this four hour long mission, and I'm like, mm, you, you just couldn't cut add four the, hours off. The you game. just cut four hours out of the game. Because yeah. I'm pretty to sure. Extra, so yeah. I was like, so to coincide with launch, you. You took out four hours of the game to try to resell it to me? Which I'll say, too, Nintendo doesn't really pull that shit, man. Nintendo does DLC right for the most part. Yeah, they, they do. They do it as a way to kind of revisit. There's some... Uh, like they, they have, like, the Luigi, new Luigi U, and then the way they offer special Pokemon at GameStop and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I mean, yeah. And they do that to, like, when, you know, when the game gets old, you know, they're like, hey, you know, remember this game? <laughs> play, the, like, here's some stuff for this game because, like, for Pokemon, it's it's perfect the way it is because it's like, hey, yeah, Sun and Moon got announced, so... um. Remember those legendaries that you probably haven't caught yet or you're waiting for a friend to give to you through, like, the right. mystery trade? So, um, yeah, here they are. Go level 100. Go get shiny version at GameStop. Go get, yeah, yeah, go get your shiny version at GameStop. And <laughs> go trade your free. you probably going to trade it to get all those, like, eight other Dragonites and crap that you're trying to get from your friend. Because <laughs> he's like, oh, my God, level 100 shiny. And you're like, yeah, so here's the lineup that I need what for my Pokemon. great fucking franchise. Oh, I love it. Yeah, Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon, I think, like, I think Pokemon, Nintendo being inept at, you know, like, the DLC trends is actually what saves Pokemon. I would hate to see Pokemon do, under the same DLC practices as the other guys I right know. now. Yeah, then you'd get, like, 20 new Pokemon in the new game, and then you'd have to pay for 20 more, and then a month later you'd get 20 more, and yeah. it costs you 20 bucks. Like, yeah, uh, or yeah. some other ridiculous price, so thank goodness. Yeah. Thank goodness for Nintendo being behind a little bit. There, There's some benefits to being behind on everything. Did you hear, too, back to, like, the movie idea, um, Pokemon, there's actually a bidding war going on now for a live-action Pokemon movie, which is utterly... St- terrifies me because i don't think there's many ways that that would turn out good yeah I'd, i here's I, what i think like i think give it another 10 15 years and it could because like right now for example um who is the guy that dev- that directed um godzilla the 2014 movie uh because I, of the g i forgot I can't remember either, but like he grew up as a Godzilla fan. He knew and loved Godzilla, so he was able to make a movie. Well, it wasn't perfect, but it did reflect 
the nature of what Godzilla is supposed to be, yeah. even if it's not perfect. And uh, right now, Pokemon, they're not going... There's nobody, I don't think, big enough in the field of entertainment in Hollywood that grew up on Pokemon that gets it, like me and you do. You yeah. know what I mean? I think... Give it 10 more years, there's going to be a Quentin Tarantino that grew up on Pokemon. You know, yeah. that's like, oh, I would love to take this movie and I'll do it right. Yeah, you know? I... I... Yeah, I kind of agree. There's so many. There's so many ways you could screw that up. Like, for example, Dragon the, Ball. The, yeah, the, the, no. I, I, yeah, Dragon Ball or Avatar or the other route it could go is like Smurfs or Alvin and the Chipmunk. Pikachu's gonna be twerking to fucking work, 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 or some shit, and it's just you're like, ah. Well, that's it for Sylph Radio. I think uh, Nathan's ruined that for me forever because I like, love hey, Pikachu. We mentioned that Facebook exists. Isn't that funny? It's a joke because we reference something that exists. Yeah, so uh, we'll see you next week, guys. Speaking <laughs> of uh, something that exists, go check out our Facebook page. We just broke 100 likes, and there's like 2,000 of you out there listening. I know it. I have the statistics. Like the Facebook page. <laughs> like the Facebook page. Silf Radio, S-I-L-P-H. You know how to spell it. You downloaded the goddamn episode. <laughs> and please, go like uh, Pretty pretty Kitty Fuzzy. Yes, please like Pretty Kitty Fuzzy. Don't look up Pretty Fuzzy. Eh, pretty, bleh. Learn to talk. Don't look up Pretty Fuzzy Kitty, like I said earlier. It's Pretty Kitty Fuzzy. It's a pretty kitty named Fuzzy. That's how you'll yes. remember. Uh, yeah. What else? Where else did, do we want to send people to? Uh, basically, for Pretty Kitty Fuzzy, uh, there's Facebook, and then there's our uh, website right now, prettykittyfuzzy.weebly.com. Um, that's where um, our public demo will be up this weekend. So if you have a wired Xbox controller or good working keyboard for your desktop you'll be able to use those and actually play oh awesome and actually by the time you're hearing this it'll already be up because i'm not going to have this out in time uh for the weekend i've still got to edit um a few other episodes ahead of it but we'll be out i'm going to try to pump it out soon it's been a while since we've had a sylph radio and the people demand their sylph radio people do demand it demand it on twitter hit me up on twitter at fairpoint pod it's not sylph radio because we just we use Twitter under the Fairpoint Pod name. If you're not familiar, I got my other show, Fairpoint Podcast, with Craig. Check that shit out. Check out Fair Enough Podcast. You got anything else you want to plug? Um, I guess I could plug Twitter. I, I don't really use my Twitter like that. I I I, I haven't used it in a, I haven't used it, and I guess I didn't adopt it as much as I did Facebook. And I'm kind of like, oh yeah, I'll use my Twitter, and <laughs> uh, I got like probably 14 people. So for like, it's like, and I'll, I I post like dumb things like, hey, so the Golden State Warriors, they're a good basketball team, right? Or like, hey, this pasta, <laughs> I ate it, it was cold, and that's it. <laughs> so in other words, what people hate about social media, <laughs> what people hate about social media. So, but um, I do have one for my um, I I, I guess I'll um. Now is a better time than ever. Um, at Ninja Gate Studio, um, that's where uh, Ninja Gate, right? Mm-hmm. Ninja, Ninja Gate, Gate Studio. Studio, got it. Yep. Um, it's the um, it's there's no S at the end of it, like the actual name. It's just Ninja Gate Studio. Okay. Um, and that's where we'll be. Um, that's why I'll use my Twitter and uh for my uh game development company. So yeah, please give them a follow. Like that shit helps independent artists and entertainers a lot because. That's how we get that. That's you. You know, you've heard it if you've listened before. <laughs> uh, before we sign out, actually, though, I've got to know. We didn't talk too much about Pokemon on this episode, so I want to close out. I've got to know your team of six. No legendaries. My team of six. Not who you play in the games as, but if you were in the Pokemon universe, who is your team of six? No legendaries. Oh, my team of six. Oh, that's perfectly easy. I cool. That's perfectly easy. Before you answer that, is there a where do you hail from? Is that a little oh, more challenging to you? Kanto, baby. Okay, a specific <laughs> town, specific city? No, no, no. I, I would, I would, I, I'm putting I don't you know. on the spot. You got to come up. I can't think. do Lavender Town. Uh, that's where I, my character's from. I can't do Lavender Town. Like, okay, before I get into this, I would <laughs> never want the Pokemon universe to be real because of ghost Pokemon. Th- that's what creeps me out because I've seen all their <laughs> descriptions. And some of the psychic Pokemon, that freaks me out. I can't be, I, have, I would have to be a Pokemon trainer. I can't be a normal yeah, person. Yeah, I was about to say, you could get Pokemon yeah. to safeguard against yeah, that. Yeah, like, I mean, but yeah, but I mean, if there's a wild one and it's like more beastly than my like trained ones, then I'm, I'm going to be so pissed. What if I told you that <laughs> there are real life versions of these things in the world and you just haven't well, that's that's run good because they I haven't run into them yet. <laughs> so, I mean, they say on their side of the fence, I stay on my side. <laughs> 
<laughs> my character is an orphan from Lavender Town. Oh, uh, man, that's depressing already. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's you... a cool character. He ended up joining Team Rocket, but he's a good guy at heart. <laughs> and he, he's kind of a Jack Sparrow of the Pokemon universe, if you will. Well, I've been dropping hints here and there about my character. Someday I'm going to do a whole episode because I have a... As you can tell from what I said about how much I have thought about just Mario, I've obviously thought <laughs> you of thought, the whole you story. You thought about for... this. I, um... So where, come on, where are you from, man? Think about it. There's Pallet Town, Viridian City, Vermilion City, Cerulean City, Pewter City, Fuchsia City, Saffron City, uh, Cinnabar Island. Am I missing anywhere? Uh, let me see. Lavender Town. Yeah, I, I think, well, which one was the, I think, I think Saffron. Saffron th- City, where Sabrina is. You don't yeah. like psychic Pokemon. No, no, oh, I do. You got, said, Sabrina's got your back because you're yeah, like, yeah. Because but- I'm like, yeah, Sabrina. I'm like, I'm gonna just run to her. Like, I'm gonna be like, hey, Sabrina. Like, there's this hypno that just trying to keep following me. Can you do something about this? But no, uh, no, I'm pre- like, no. After a while, like my beast lineup. I mean, it may not sound beast, but like two of them that I would have because they are my favorite. It would, it would, it would creep me out for a while. But I think if I train it right, I want a Gengar. Oh. That's my man. That. He that is my that that's my number two like that is my number two favorite Pokemon. You should Gengar. listen to a few episodes ago. Um, Jeremy, who's a regular co-host on this show, uh, his favorite Pokemon is Gengar, and his favorite type is Ghost type. And we did an episode about the Ghost type, and we talk about like our ideas and theories about what it would be like training Ghost type Pokemon. And I think you'd find that very interesting, huh? But yeah, so uh, Gengar is your second favorite. Yeah, Gengar is my second favorite. This may sound cliche, people might hate me, but Pikachu is my first favorite. That's okay. And here's Pikachu's here's fucking why. awesome. He, 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 here's why. And it may, it may sound stupid to some of the uh, listeners. I remember my friends were talking about Pokemon, and I was the one guy who would poo-poo it in middle school. Oh, really? I was like, you know, what? That's, like, that sounds dumb. Like, <laughs> you know, you never catch me doing some dumb crap like that pokemon whatever can i ask i'm just curious what's the age gap between us if there is one i'm third i'm gonna be 31 tomorrow as i'm of this actually recording. 31 now okay so yeah that's so that's not in huge... five and a half hours i will be we will be the same age we will be the same age <laughs> <laughs> but um so i i sat there and i was like you know pokemon that sounds stupid i i don't want it so one day i ended up i bought a, I bought a game boy and i was trying to figure out what game i wanted to play and then I saw the Pokemon commercial where they were all on the bus, yes, where the kids yes. were on the bus. I love that fucking commercial. And, like, the, all the Pokemon were super rowdy on that bus until Pikachu walked on it, and then they it just they all calmed the hell down. <laughs> and I was like, yo, whatever that thing is, he has got their respect. I am getting this game. <laughs> I was like, he has got their respect. And there, this, maybe there were the seeds for Pretty Kitty Fuzzy were laid. The cute, the cute, yeah, uh, well, powerful. I was always a corny person like that because I, I like cats and I've had cats in the past. And every time I've had a dog, it was stolen. Like I would, I would be attached to a dog and then it would get what stolen. What the fuck? And and, I'm, and I'd be like, what the hell? Who like, steals a dog? Like, what the uh, fuck? Th- like, yeah. It's uh, every time I've had a dog, it's been sto- it's been stolen. So I'm like, uh, I have bad luck with dogs because, uh, especially when I get a dog that I like, and then somebody's like, oh yeah, I like that dog too. You're Sprite. literally breaking my heart. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like so real life cats, Team Rocket. Yeah, with cats, it's just like. You know, cats have always been there. And then, like, usually, like, um, I've had some cats that have died or I had to give some cats away because, you know, I, I, the next place I was going to move in didn't accept household oh, animals. So rough. Yeah, that was so hard when I had a cat dealing yeah. with that. So, yeah, the, the seeds. Uh, so I always like the cutesy stuff like that. But so I, going back to my lineup. Is there a cat on your team? Um, I didn't find any of them that were. Are you excited about this new one? The new fire type starter? I didn't see that one. I I didn't I didn't I didn't see anything on Sun and Moon. Oh, did I just spoil it for you? I'm sorry. No, no, no. You, 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 that's okay because I'm like I didn't see anything on Sun and Moon because I wanted to wrap up some stuff in X and Y. Oh, okay. I want I, I wanted to like get like like I got some of the legendary codes and everything. So I'm I, like I'm trying to get me a new th- uh, 3ds. Because my other one died. Well, since, like, since I already spoiled it, the fire type starter is a cat, and there's never been a cat starter before, and I'm pretty excited that it might be pretty cool. Oh, uh, see, guys, I always stick with water in the beginning. Oh, the one. water one's really fucking stupid looking. The the fire and grass ones both look like they could grow up to be pretty dope. The, the water one looks pretty dumb. But uh, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, uh, so, okay, Pikachu and Gengar. Pikachu and Gengar. Hitmonlee. Oh, nice. Okay. I always... 
like and, and and it's also stems with poke and tournament i was so upset when i did not see hitmon lee i wanted pock and tournament to be just fighting types as much as i would be a little disappointed by that i would think it was a novel idea to do a pokemon fighting game of just fighting types i'd be like that's cool yeah and the first well, few that they showed were fighting types yeah. so and then they showed pikachu and then everybody's like what's so good about what's so like there's nothing good about pikachu no pikachu's I, awesome fuck yeah, you yeah but the thing is in his little um in his little like um mega mode he his moveset changes to his fighting style like Heihachi from Tekken so, <laughs> so he cool. so he has all of Heihachi's combos and I'm like oh, oh I God. played Heihachi in Tekken like <laughs> um like Heihachi has this thing called electric wind god fist and he it's a three it's an uppercut that you can combo into three times and it does devastating amount of damage in the first beta of the game, Pikachu actually kills you when he connects you with the Heihachi combo. Oh my god, wow. Like, so I saw him fight like a um, Mega Lucario, and he killed him in three hits. Wow. Like, and he, Mega Lucario had, like, full health. Okay. And then he was just like, bam, bam, bam. The game and I was does like, look so cool. I was just like, oh my god, like... And Gengar's in it, too. I was like, yeah. Yeah, Gengar, Gengar's in it, too. Like, Pikachu and Gengar. Like, most of my friends that played me in that game, I've already... They don't, they don't even play me in that anymore. Like... They don't even get past Gengar, and Gengar's not even, like, my best. <laughs> and then Pikachu, I'm just wave-dashing at people. They're like, why is Pikachu so good? Tekken, dude. Like, the haters of Tekken. But, um, yeah, like, I would have Hitmonlee. Um, Dragonite. Okay. I would, I would have Dragonite, just because he, he, has, that, he has that spot. Right he has on that the cusp spot of Legendary. The, yeah, he, you, you, he's right there. You're he's allowed not a Dragonite. Quite. Yeah, he's not, he's not quite. Um, so that's four. We got Pikachu, Gengar, Hitmonlee, Dragonite. And then um, the other two that I probably would do... Um, that's where it gets tough. There's the last two, and then there's the last one. It's yeah, like, it's mm. um, Greninja. Oh, I fucking love I, I love Gre- I'm actually wearing my Team yeah, Froakie shirt. Greninja is like... Because like, I, I wasn't sold on Froakie. Cause I, I like with the with the. That's why I'm still holding out hope for the new water starter. Maybe he's because Froakie doesn't look any like anything special. Yeah, Froakie but... didn't look like anything special. And then when I saw like his final form, I was like, "Oh my oh. god, his tongue's a ninja scarf! That's, That's so amazing!" Cool. I was like, "Oh my god!" Um, and then I would probably I, I would probably hit me up with uh. Uh, Alakazam, because I did like he was nice. He was my favorite. So you're afraid of psychics and ghosts, but then yeah. they'll be there to protect you. Yeah, they they would be there to protect me. I would be leery at first, but and I think I would, you know, I would because I'm kind of a jokester and I'm jokey at nature. I think I think the ghost Pokemon would be like, oh okay, like like if I catch it and he's a ghastly, I think ghastly would be like, okay, this is a guy that I can hang with. Like <laughs> I could I could I could fucks with this guy. Like you nice. know, he does jokes, I do jokes. And yeah, that that'd be my team. So who was your first Pokemon out of those six? Who out was your who, which like your character? Who was your first? Who, I would, who was your? I, star? Would, I would say Pikachu. Yeah. Okay. He, cool. he would be my frontline guy. I would I would I would basically train him to where he like he would handle the slide. But I mean like you that was your first Pokemon. Like yeah, that's what I mean. That, like, oh, the, my, that first Pokemon, oh, my first Pokemon. My first Pokemon Pikachu. I would have to go out okay. in the forest find me a Pikachu, yeah. and that would be it. Um. If I pass by Lavender Town, I'm probably going to get caught out there by a couple ghost Pokemon, <laughs> not going to lie. Some of them going to scare the shit out of me. One of them's going to get caught. And I'm going to catch one with a Master Ball and just haul ass out of that city. I don't care <laughs> what, what beef anyone else has with what. That Cubone and its mom thing, it's on its own. So how am I going to get this Mewtwo? Well, dude, just use your Master Ball. I already used it. I already you already used, used it. your Master Ball and what? Oh, a fucking Ghastly. On a Ghastly? Dude, have you been face-to-face? <laughs> it was scary. Have you, Don't judge have me. Have you been face-to-face with a Ghastly? You don't no, know me. <laughs> you don't know what I've been through. <laughs> like, oh, man. Like, I, I, probably, I would probably give Mewtwo the beats a little bit. I, I probably, I, you know, I, I, my Pokemon. I think he would give them beats a little bit. Like that whole them being weak to bug, though. That's a that's a lie. I've tried that so many times where I've like used the bug attack, and it's like it's super effective. Yeah, but he took five HP off of them. Have you heard? I, somebody online was like, it makes sense. Psychic are are weak to bug. Every type that psychic is weak to is something that people are afraid of. Ghosts, bugs. What else? I don't remember. <laughs> but oh yeah, no, it was ghost bugs dark. And dark, okay, yeah, they're, they're weak to dark types because people are afraid of dark. Primal huh. fears for humanity, for the huh. mind, isn't that crazy? I didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't think that would be something that deep, right? like that. Ghost because I never. And I'm just like. I'm just like whatever. I, like, why would psychic types be weak to bug? Like, that's stupid. Yeah. But no, no. Now, now that you say that, 
that makes complete sense because like when dark pokemon came out and i was like yeah i got my mewtwo bam whoa 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 what's this like <laughs> then i was like oh okay dark type i'm you know shadow ball it, it amazes me i'm like oh we gotta run from this battle like <laughs> it really up. does amaze me how many little details there are like that in pokemon that don't get discovered for like a decade after they introduce yeah. them and shit yeah like, i know so great like like fairy types are and now that i think about it fairy types are weak to dragons because dragons were considered the original wizards or mages because they they ate treasure and they were the first right. progenitors of magic in in most dragon mythology That's that cool. that would kind of make sense and i like the fairy type i don't care what anybody says yeah sylveon sylveon's dope sylveon is my honorable mention nice sylveon's my she, honorable she, she's mention she's in your pc or chilling back at the house yeah, with yeah chilling back at the house <laughs> like you know you know I have also my that was my A team, my B team. I've I've grown really fond of um uh, Pancham and Pangoro. Oh, cool. yeah, yeah. I've grown really fond of that Pokemon. I don't know why, but like it's the like it, it's attitude that's just like the most badass thing walking this planet. I love pandas and I think it's pretty cool. It's yeah. about time we got a panda Pokemon. Yeah, that was that was actually pretty cool too. So I, I thought I was like, you know what, he's on my B team. If I if I if he's he's definitely on my B team. Well, thank you so much, Antoine. I you appreciate are it. Thanks for coming to the secret room. I yep. hope to have you here again. Uh, listeners, keep an eye on Fair Enough. Keep an eye on Self Radio. You, you got to come back, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, keep just keep track of Pretty Kitty Fuzzy and uh, at NinjaGate Studio on uh, Twitter. And uh, we'll just be updating people. And uh, Pretty Kitty Fuzzy should be launching at the end of uh, the summer on uh, Steam through, for the PC, Mac, and Linux. And we will definitely remind you and let you know uh, when that is out, whether or not Antoine's here in the studio. Uh, from the Secret Room, I'm Nathan K. I'm Antoine B. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.